The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching the disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handled, handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand that, saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you were arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around them, it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Everybody to take a moment and remember your first job you had growing up. Do you remember it fondly? Mine was in a tattoo parlor. <laughs> Actually, it was ShopRite. And I was, uh, I was a bag boy when they had plastic bags. And then I became a stock clerk. And the uniform at the time, later on we went to polo shirts, but the uniform when I started was black pants, white shirt, black tie, big ugly yellow name tag. And the name tag that had those machines where they typed out your name and stuck it, how may I help you, Dan. Now, the really important people in that ShopRite store in Hudson had a black name tag. And that one was professionally engraved. They must have sent away to some company to have them sent in. You had to have been there like 20 years or been a department manager to have a black name tag. Well, lo and behold, this guy Chuck, they're always named Chuck. <laughs> Chuck was the maintenance guy at ShopRite. Sometimes he doubled as a frozen food guy. I don't know how that happened, but nevertheless. Chuck somehow, and we're not sure how, got a hold of one of the black name tags. And he took the little sticky part of his name Chuck on the yellow name tag and proudly wore the black name tag and everybody in the store, all the employees, were in an uproar. How dare Chuck steal the black name tag? Doesn't he know what it takes to earn one of those? Now looking back, how stupid that was, right? How silly and petty. I bet though, I, I mean this, I bet each of us can think of something from our place of employment where there was some silly little black name tag thing, right? Do those things ultimately mean anything? No. But only through time and, and maturity can we see the folly and stupidity of these false badges, in this case a little literal badge, of honor. And that, that's today kind of what the gospel is about. Here's Jesus, okay? He's, he's telling them exactly, the disciples, what's going to happen to him. He says, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and in three days the Son of Man will rise. The disciples didn't know what he was talking about, but do they ask for a clarification? Do they ask him to, to explain further? No. 
they go about with their own little petty dispute. And Jesus calls him out on it later on. He's like, what are you guys talking about back there? He knows. Oh, Jesus knows. And what do they say? They were talking about who is the greatest among them. They were arguing about who has, among those 12, the greatest place of honor. You know, I was listening to, to Bishop Barron this week, and it's something he talks about quite often. He, he quotes one of his um, heroes, St. Thomas Aquinas. And St. Thomas Aquinas said there are four main distractions that we as human beings have that keep us from God. And I think the, the first three are pretty obvious. Wealth, pleasure, power, but also the fourth, honor. Are we out trying to seek places of honor? You know, St. James addresses this in the second reading today. He says, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. He then talks about how do we cultivate peace? You know, so often we, we hear about a world at war. You know, you look at, look at all the, the terrible things happening right now in the Middle East, Ukraine and other areas of the globe. There's a lot of hot spots right now. But in order to cultivate peace globally, we have to start locally, to have a peaceable heart, to follow Christ, to get rid of any time we can identify those four main distractions in our life, wealth, pleasure, power, and honor, where we see those things creep up, those are the times we have to ask God for the help to help us avoid those distractions and to keep our eyes focused on the prize, and that prize is eternal life with him. And, and you know, the, the, the beautiful thing about this is then after they have this dispute, the, the 12, uh, with Jesus, and he, he calls them out on their, their stupid little power dispute, he finds a child, and they're walking, and he, he grabs a child. You know, God calls each of us to be innocent like a child. What is a child in, in first century Jewish society? A child is a nobody, a nothing. Does a child have, have wealth or power or status? No. A child is completely dependent on his or her parents. Just the same, we are to surrender our own will, to surrender all, all our own ambitions over to God, to his will, to the Father's will, just the same as Jesus did when he handed himself over to be killed. Now, this is not a matter, by the way, it's, it's not a matter of hating ourselves or, or being, you know, disgusted at some of our, our own ambitions, our own, own struggles with these, these certain distractions, as Aquinas calls them. You know, there's an old maxim that says, and I think it bears true, God doesn't want us to think less of ourselves. He wants us to think of ourselves less, to be less selfish and more helpful to be not full of ourselves, but be willing to lend a hand to others. You know, today, this morning, we have Saturday morning Mass, as many of you know, and today is the feast day of St. Matthew, apostle and evangelist. And there's a, there's a beautiful painting in the Contarelli Chapel in Rome. It was painted in the year 1600 by a man who had his own struggles, as many of you know, a painter by the name of Caravaggio. It's a very famous painting of the call of St. Matthew. And in that painting, it pictures Jesus pointing at St. Matthew. A, a supernatural light is coming through the window, and you see Matthew. It's just a beautiful scene, you know, the psychological depth that that painter captured of this moment in time. With his left thumb, he's pointing, saying, me? His right hand is still holding on to the tax money that he stole from his own fellow Jews. It's a beautiful, it's a call. Which way did Matthew go? He left that distraction of wealth aside, 
and went with Jesus. And it's at that segue that I use to introduce to you the called by name program. At the back, we have so many things back near that font, guys. I don't know. It's, it's, there's, there's two baskets for, for Deacon Church's mission. There's some brochures. But there's also a little table with these white cards on them. And we are asking you to prayerfully consider if you know any young men who would be good candidates for the priesthood. You know, we, we, we need, as I mentioned previously, we need lay people to serve the church, absolutely. We need deacons too, but we also need priests. And if you know of anybody in this church that you think would make a good priest, and right now we're, we're looking for anybody who has graduated high school, young men, if you even just know their first name, we will find out who you're talking about. We ask you to, to grab one of these cards and bring it back with you next week to fill it out. You know, Jesus told Matthew, follow me. Just those simple words pointed at him. If, if you go by that painting of Caravaggio. And what did Matthew do? He answered the call of Christ. You know, each of us is called to a mission in life. And sometimes we have to help each other find out what that mission is. You know, we're all here for each other. We are the body of Christ, the church, here to worship Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because together, you know, we can build a bigger and better church. And together, we can answer that call. And we just kindly ask you to prayerfully consider of any young men that you might know who have the gifts to be a priest. And those young men, you know, like St. Matthew, might not think you're worthy at the time. But God didn't call the perfect. He called each of us as a sinner. And he called us to holy things. Let us contemplate on that today as we, as we receive this gospel into our hearts.